All right, so as I'm sure many of you probably already know, or perhaps not, d and is now officially partnered with Foundry VTT, which is huge news, at least in the virtual tabletop space. Frankly, I don't know why it took WotC so long to partner with Foundry VTT, considering how popular it has gotten in recent years, and considering many people consider it to be the king of VTTs right now at least for the time being. But while these new big announcements and updates are really exciting, especially because it comes with a lot of new content and features, it also comes with a lot of growing pains, especially for people like me who love our mods, and especially for people like you out there who perhaps are mod creators and have to deal with all of these new updates, especially when there's tons of bugs that come with them, and especially when these new updates can potentially make your mod obsolete. But anyways, I would say that the new update that Foundry just did to their D&D system is totally worth the update, even if it does make a couple of your mods obsolete or make some of your mods no longer compatible with this new version of D&D. But before we begin... Hello there. My name is Neymon, and I'm a huge fan of Foundry VTT, who's been using the software for roughly four years at this point. And in this video, I'm going to be showcasing some of the big features and content that Foundry VTT's new D&D version 3.0 brings to the table, as well as giving some of my thoughts and opinions on some of these new features, considering that I've used many different types of VTTs over the course of my game mastering career. While I will be talking about some mods in this video, I won't be going super in-depth into talking about all the mods that are compatible with this new version of D&D, like I did with this video that I made previously, talking about the top 10 mods for D&D for Foundry VTT. However, I do plan on recreating and updating this video, so if that interests you, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified immediately when I upload it. But anyways, the first thing that you'll notice when getting into a new D&D 3.0 world is that the pause icon is now the D&D logo that pulses with this kind of white light around it when a game is paused. It's not exactly cutting edge or changes a whole lot, but you know, it's a nice little cool detail, I guess. But now, moving on to probably the biggest and coolest change that Foundry has brought to their D&D system, the character sheet, with a brand new look and layout. So to give you a quick before and after, this is the old D&D character sheet, and this is the new D&D character sheet. But anyway, starting right here at the left, you have your armor class, initiative, proficiency, and speed, as well as a new cool looking HP bar and hit dice bar. And hidden away right here is the death save drop down bar, which is a clever way of saving space on the character sheet itself. But it can be kind of difficult to find if you're used to the old character sheet layout. Let me tell you, it took me a little bit to find it. But if you want even more space, this whole section right here can be completely collapsed if desired, which is a pretty cool feature, especially for those of you out there who like a much more minimal look for your character sheets. Then you of course have your classic ability scores at the top, followed by your skills, and then saving throws, as well as some important traits, resistances, and all that good stuff. And then here at the very top you have your rest buttons, inspiration, and level, as well as this little edit button here which allows you to delete or edit things on your character sheet, which we'll get to here in a little bit. And to make an ability, skill, or attack roll, it works the exact same way as it did before, so don't worry about that. All you have to do is just hover over whatever sort of roll you want to make, and left click it, and it will either prompt you with a query roll, or put the attack card in chat, where you can click on the attack button to make an attack roll, or the damage button to roll for damage. And by this point, you may have noticed these little tabs on the side of your character sheet, which are actually a new way for you to navigate your character sheet and for you to access your character sheet details, your inventory, features, spells, effects, and biography. And firstly, I actually want to talk about the inventory because this is probably my favorite update that Foundry has brought to this new D&D character sheet. So if you've watched some of my previous videos where I showcased some of my favorite mods for the D&D system, then you will have most likely heard of the item collection mod, which essentially allowed you to create backpacks or containers and put items in those containers, which meant that your inventory wasn't super cluttered and it was a super useful mod. But sadly, or perhaps not sadly for those of you who don't like mods, this new version of D&D that Foundry has released has made that mod completely obsolete. Because now you can simply click on any container you have in your inventory and seamlessly click and drag items to and from them. Them. And the more containers, backpacks, pouches, bags of holding, or whatever you add, it will automatically add a little spot for them at the top of your character sheet. And you can also notice that right here there's a new location for your carrying capacity with a helpful little breakdown of how it's calculated. An additional new feature is this favorite tab right here, which is an easy way for you to quickly access spells or items that you frequently use, besides using another quick access feature like the macro bar for example. But going back to the inventory, right at the top right here you have a search bar to search for anything in your inventory, a few different ways to sort your inventory, and of course the number of items that you are currently attuned to. 
And actually, one thing that I did notice, and I hope that they end up changing, or at least at the time of recording was not a part of this feature, was that when you search for things in your inventory, it doesn't register things that are in your containers or your backpacks, for example. So like right here, I try searching for torches, and it says that I don't have any, but they're actually just in my backpack, but it didn't register that I had any, so then it said that I had none. So I would just keep that in mind, and maybe if you're the game master, just let your players know that the search function doesn't search every container in your inventory. But anyways, moving right along. Regardless Regarding the Spells and Features tab, they look fairly similar to the old version. Some small differences are that features are now separated into specific categories as opposed to before, when they were all just kind of lumped together with general categories. But if you prefer the old sorting method, you can turn off the Group by Origin sorting mode. Besides that, you no longer have to hover over the art of the feature or spell to use it, and if you click it, it will no longer expand the feature or spell to give you a description in your character sheet, but instead it will put all that info into chat, which I definitely still need to get used to and I'm not really sure if I like, if I'm honest. So, if you want to read the description of something with this new character sheet, you now only have to hover over it and this little pop-up will appear. And this works the exact same way with items. As far as I can tell, the only real way for you to read the description of something in your character sheet without having to put it into chat or without using the pop-up is by editing the item or feature or spell or whatever. One small thing that I've noticed that I don't really like about this new change to the descriptions is that you can't click on a hyperlink in the description pop-up, which wasn't really an issue with the old character sheet because you could just expand the description and click on any hyperlink as desired. But as you can see here, I can't hover over the description of the spell and click the hyperlinked text which would be the intuitive course of action, without it disappearing after a couple of seconds. So what I've found is that with this new character sheet, you either have to edit the sheet or put it into chat in order to click the hyperlink to the monster sheet or journal entry or whatever you're trying to get to. Now, full disclosure, I could be missing like a key binding or something to allow me to do that, but I tried doing the classic like control left click, shift left click, control shift left click, alt left click and stuff like that to see if it worked. And as far as I could tell, it didn't seem to. Besides that, the spell tab itself works the same way as it used to, except for the new changes that I just covered. The only real change is the location of your spell attack mod and DC, and the appearance of the spell description sheet, which has an icon that corresponds to the school of magic that the spell comes from at the top right, which is a pretty cool little detail. One other thing that's pretty cool is that you can easily change your primary spellcasting ability by clicking this little dot if you happen to multiclass into multiple spellcasting classes. And speaking of multiclassing, if you want to level up your character, that works pretty much the same way as before. You just have to change your level and features by clicking the edit button on the top left of your character sheet, then adjusting your level, or by clicking and dragging the same or a different class onto your character sheet from the compendium. Then follow the instructions, and boom. Pretty simple stuff, right? But now onto the effects tab. In my opinion, this looks way better than it used to. As you can see, it's a lot simpler to turn on or disable effects and shows all of the current proficiencies and spell effects that are currently in use, or spell effects that your character has the possibility to activate, such as Bane for example. But of course, you can always activate effects the old school way by right clicking on your token and selecting which ones you want to activate. And last but not least on your character sheet is your biography, which hasn't had any major changes from what I can tell at least. Regarding my initial thoughts on this new character sheet, frankly, I love it. I think that they did a great job of making this character sheet feel like an official D&D character sheet that no other UI mod that I've used hasn't really succeeded at doing, or at least in my opinion. Like, for example, the subtle paper texture that they applied to the character sheet, or the previously mentioned School of Magic icons that are on each spell card. Or you may have noticed the subtle artwork splashed around the character sheet, like on the top banner, or next to these background traits. Sadly, they don't change depending on what background choices you make, but that would be pretty cool if they did, albeit unnecessary and probably a lot of work to set up. But the more I looked at this character sheet, the more I began to notice and appreciate these tiny little details that they added to the character sheet to truly bring it to life and make it feel like a D&D character sheet, which is really cool, and it definitely feels much more vibrant and alive than the previous character sheet, which I mean, let's be honest, it was kind of dull. On top of this, the much-needed addition of the backpack feature and making everything on the character sheet a lot easier to read, manage, and find without making the whole sheet feel like a cluttered mess is amazing, and a much-needed upgrade from what it used to be. One of the only things that I think that they dropped the ball on was the spell slot marker design. I just think that they look super dull when they're supposed to represent your magical capabilities and how many times you can cast a spell and things like that. Like, I think that it would be really cool if they were orbs similar to the inspiration one, if not maybe a 
a little bit more rounded or something, and maybe they changed color or intensity depending on what spell level it corresponds to. The plain beige color that they are now fits with the overall sheet design, I guess, but it just seems a bit lackluster, at least in my humble opinion. And secondly, and this is just more of like a Game Master sided gripe than anything, but it's kind of annoying that the character sheet gets this amazing glow up, which don't get me wrong, it looks amazing, but then the monster and NPC sheets, which us Game Masters primarily spend our time looking at, goes from this to this. I mean, there's no update. There has been no changes at all to the NPC and monster sheets, which is kind of annoying, and I can't help but feel left out as a Game Master that the characters and players get this really cool looking character sheet, and then the monsters just get the same boring old beige one. I mean, come on, like, I don't know. Like, let me know in the comments if I'm overreacting or if maybe you feel the same way. Like, I don't know, I think it would be kind of cool if maybe they had like a slight change, right? Like maybe there was new colors or there was a theme for what kind of monster it was or whatever. And don't get me wrong, I understand like the whole theme thing would take a lot of work, but I just wish there was a little bit more of an update to it as opposed to no change from the previous version. But anyways, I've ranted enough, let's move on to the next point, which is tokens. So the D&D 3.0 system has implemented a new dynamic ring option for tokens. This allows you to customize your token border by changing the color, adding a pulse, gradient, or background wave. And then on top of that, if you enable the use of the dynamic ring feature, it adds some pretty cool little flares that occur when a token is targeted, takes damage, or is healed. While this is a pretty cool feature that they added, it doesn't work very well with tokens that don't use borders. It does kind of make the tokens look like a traditional miniature, I suppose, from like a top-down perspective, but it doesn't work the way that you might expect in the sense that it kind of goes around the border of that token like some other mods might do. But now onto some other little details that may go unnoticed. Chad has had the same paper effect applied to it that was applied to your character sheet, which gives it a pretty cool look in my opinion. Plus, on the GM side of things, it now more clearly displays if an attack hits or misses a creature, which is super useful. And lastly, the new group actor is a great way for your party to trade items and for the GM to award experience and loot, but we'll get into that a little bit more in detail in this next section, which is more for the GM side of things. And since this next section kind of pertains to the Game Master side of things, I really wanted to talk about this new D&D premium module that was released on Foundry, which is the Shattered Obelisk, or Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk, which is kind of like the Lost Mine of Fandelver and the Shattered Obelisk combined, which is essentially a massive adventure that goes all the way from level 1 to level 12, and it's all pre-made, which is really cool. And Foundry has done a great job of integrating all of that into their amazing software. So firstly, wow, I mean, like this module is amazing especially as someone who has ran the Lost Mine of Fandelver campaign dozens of times on Foundry, and as someone who has gone through and meticulously created intricate journals with hyperlinks to items, actors, and other journals, and so forth for the campaign to make my job as the GM slightly easier, it is so nice to have an official module with well-made and thought-out journals that make being a GM so much easier. You guys may have seen this in the Foundry announcement video for their D&D version 3.0 release, but the quality of life additions that they have added to the Game Master side of things for the whole Fandolin story arc is nothing short of amazing. If you're not using any mods that allow you to loot actors or treasure chests or anything like that, then you as the Game Master can now award treasure and experience easily by using the commands that the developers have put in the journal entries, and they work super well with my experience. While I personally love the use of mods that allow my players to loot tokens or tiles or things like that, this is a great starting point for game masters that want to run a game using minimal mods. And plus, if you set up the group actor like the adventure recommends, you can easily check passive perceptions and award treasure or loot. However, at the time of recording this video, I did notice that passive perception macros were either missing from the journal entries or I just failed to set it up properly or something. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened there, but hopefully they fixed that. But for example, in this release video, you can see that there should be a passive perception macro in this specific journal entry that seems to be missing from mine. However, one feature that I do hope they add is making a lootable actor feature similar to what Foundry's Pathfinder 2nd Edition system has. Also, this is just a tip for you game masters out there who perhaps want to run part of if not the entire Fandelver and Below adventure using Foundry VTT, but the base maps that come with the adventure are... Uh, they look pretty outdated, in my opinion, and they don't look like they were designed for a VTT. Don't get me wrong, they're super high resolution, and they look great on a VTT, especially if you have a big screen. However, there are better options out there. So if you want some super cool, high resolution, and realistic looking maps for your Fandolin adventure that will make your players feel truly immersed, then I would really recommend checking out Forgotten Adventures catalog, and for full, 
clarification, I am not sponsored by them or anything. I just really appreciate what they're doing. They have basically all of the maps that the Fandelver and Below Adventure uses, and I believe they're working on recreating each map using their art style. And what's really cool about these maps, in case you're worried about having to do a lot of work, is that they come pre-made with lighting, sounds, and interactable tiles that allow you to trigger traps or sound effects which truly immerses your players in the world of the Forgotten Realms. And the best part about these maps, or at least at the time of recording, is that they are entirely free, so you lose nothing for using them. And if you end up liking their assets or want to purchase some of their other maps or support them on Patreon, you can definitely do so. However, there is a tiny downside to using the Forgotten Adventure maps because they do not have the journal entries that are placed around the map like the premium D&D maps have. However, if you know how to set those up, it's actually really easy to do and completely negates this little issue. But anyways, everybody, that was my overview for this brand new D&D version 3.0 for Foundry VTT, and I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, consider leaving a like and a comment down below in regards to some of the thoughts that I dropped in this video, or perhaps your thoughts on this new version of D&D and if you're going to be upgrading or not and your reasons why. But as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I always enjoy reading your guys' comments, and thank you so much for getting me to 800 subscribers. That's honestly really crazy to think that I just was making these videos just for fun and now we're almost at a thousand. But even still, everybody, I appreciate you and thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy. Bye-bye.